Hello, I'm Ellie for Radio for Java. And this is tutorial number nine of Java game programming. We are going to talk about adding punctuation and speed increase. Every game needs a measurement of success. In our case, we will include in the top left corner of the screen the punctuation, which will be the number of times we are able to hit the ball with the racket. On the other hand, the game should be a, more, a bit more complicated each time, so the player doesn't get bored. The moving objects of the game are the ball and the racket. Changing the speed of these two objects, will, we will modify the speed of the game. We're going to include a property called speed in the game class to keep the speed of the game. The property speed will be 1 initially and it will increase each time we hit the ball with the racket. For the punctuation, we need another property to increase each time we hit the ball. Instead of creating a new property, I'm going to reuse speed. The only inconvenience is that the punctuation start in 0 and not in 1 as speed. The solution I thought of was add get score method which returns the value of speed minus 1. Here it is. Let's copy the game class. The game, the class ball. And we're also going to need the class racket. From the tutorial 7 here, we're going to copy sound, which is just the same, there are no modification as the other one. And these three, which are the sound files, remember? Here we are. Okay, let's play it. Game. Run. You can see that the punctuation is increasing and that the speed is getting faster. Your score is 4. Accept. Let's see what we've done. In the class game, in the method paint, I've added these three lines. I set the color for the punctuation to grey. I set the font to Verdana bold and I set the size for 30 pixels. And I also use the method draw string of G2D to paint uh, the punctuation. Here I get the score with the method get score and uh, it's an integer. So I have to change it to string because I am going to do a string. I do it with value of, of string. And I draw it in the position 1030 in the top left corner where we've seen it. I also modify the game over method. I change the method game over, writing a new pop up message. I write your score is and I write also the score. I've also changed this here. I initialize the variable speed to 1. Now let's see the modifications of wall. We have changed the move method here in x. A equals 1. You remember that it was 1. I've, I've written game.speed. We are getting a property speed of game. When the ball bounces, the speed has increased, so the ball is going to move faster. The same 
each time. The same each time it bounces back. Here it is negative, it will go to the left. This uh, game dot speed here makes a special effect. Let's run it. And you can see does it, it doesn't bounce diagonally now. It makes a special effect. If you notice, the angle has changed. It doesn't hit the wall with 45 degrees. Another modification of the move method is when there is a collision. When the ball hits the racket, we increase in one the speed. This plus plus is an operator which is the same as writing game.sport equals game.speed plus one. We increase by one this property. What happened in bracket? It is nearly the same. When somebody presses a key, remember we wrote minus one so that the ball went left or one if the ball went right, now we get the speed directly from gate dot game dot speed. The racket is going to have the same speed as the ball. This change is important. If we had if we had left one, the ball goes very quickly, and we never could have hit it with a racket. We want to make it complicated, but we don't want to make it impossible. Lastly, I want to comment something. The access I did with game.speed from the ball and racket class is di a direct access to a property in the game class. The direct access, is access to a property is not considered correct in business Java. The correct way is to use getters and setters to encapsulate the properties and this way only access to them using them. Strangely enough, in the area of games development, it is very common and it is justified because of its efficiency. This is very important in mobile programming due to the shortage of resources as CPU and memory. Okay, this is all for this tutorial. See you in the next one. Bye!